Oh hey, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at a lighthearted topic to take our minds off of everything negative going on in the world. 2020 is the year of ah! I'd rather go ah! to some cringe on TikTok rather than going ah! to what I'm seeing outside. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at a TikToker that doesn't believe in math. Yet she's posting this video through a platform and a device which wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for math. I was just doing my makeup for work and I just wanted to tell you guys about how I don't think math is real. And I know that like it's real because we all like learn it in school or whatever, but who came up with this concept? And you're like Pythagoras, but how? How did he come up with this? He was living in like the, I don't know, whenever he was living, but it was not now where you can like have technology and stuff, you know? Like he didn't even have plumbing. And he was like, let me worry about Y equals MX plus B, which first of all, how would you even figure that out? How would you like start on the concept of algebra? Like, what did you need it for? You know, cause like I get like addition, like, hey, if I take two apples and then add three, it's five, you know? But how would you come up with the concept of like algebra? Cause what would you need it for? You know what I mean? Like, what would you need it for back then? It, you didn't need it, so why would you come up with it? This is why public schools need more funding. <laughs> they needed algebra back then so they could make all the advances for you to then ask this question on a handheld supercomputer. You know that saying, saying that there's no such thing as a dumb question? Well, these questions are stress testing that theory. And then she asked something around the lines of, how did they know they needed algebra? Well, they weren't looking for algebra. They just happened to stumble upon algebra to solve their problem. Algebra, more like algebra. <laughs> I hate you. I am a comedian. <laughs> a 12 year old. And well, if you come up with a formula that predicts past outcomes and future outcomes, well, that's all you need to know that it's correct. But naturally the video we just saw blew up on TikTok so much so that she made another video clarifying some of her questions here. Hi folks, I'd like to redo my TikTok about how math is not real and I would like to be smart this time because <laughs> I didn't know that was gonna go viral. My first question is how did people know what they were looking for when they started theorizing about formulas because I wouldn't know what to look for if I'm making up math. Question number two, once they did find these formulas, how did they know that they were right? Because how? Number three, why is everyone being really mean to me on Twitter? <laughs> number four, why did a physicist who's followed by Barack Obama retweet me? Number five, is this number five? I can't count. Number six, is anyone gonna post this on Twitter? <laughs> number seven, why are the only people who are disagreeing with me the ones who are dumb and the physicists and mathematicians are agreeing with me? Okay, after seeing this video, I actually kind of feel bad for her now. <laughs> I guess she was just asking a genuine question, most likely just to a couple hundred friends who followed her. But you know, since TikTok has this whole for you page algorithm, technically anyone could post a video on TikTok and have a chance for it to hit the for you page to then it being thrown out in front of tens of millions of eyes. I feel like that's why a lot of people think it's cool as well, because like there's a chance that all these people could see what I'm putting out. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But it also is really scary if you're like, I'm just going to post this for my friends. And then <laughs> I know the just the, the correct click through rate and the correct amount of re loops yeah. and engagement on it. And suddenly it's on the for you page and everyone's seen it. We did not have anything like that growing up. I'm so glad that all of my stupid questions went uh, to my very annoyed teacher in private <laughs> rather than on the for you page of TikTok. Because I, I probably had a whole bunch of really dumb questions when I was young. But it seems like she's kind of running out on a minefield with the next one because I guess she I guess she went viral for asking dumb questions. So I guess she started asking some more dumb questions, but this time about history, which is a slippery slope for conversation topics, definitely in today's age. Definitely when you ask questions like, how do we know if the Crusades were real? That's the slippery slope. <laughs> in her defense, at least she's asking questions and not making stupid stances with no base. Correct. There's a lot of people who do correct. that. But uh, definitely when, when I saw that, I went, ah! Hi guys, I didn't learn my lesson and I want to talk about more things I don't think are real, okay? 
On this episode, I'd like to talk about how I don't think history is real. Disclaimer, I do think history is real and I completely am not trying to invalidate anyone who studies history because I love history and I want to study it too. Now, how do we know that the stuff that we're studying actually happened? Because there's no way for us to go back and ask them unless there's time travel. Because like, we're like, oh, Christopher Columbus like wrote about it. But how do we know that was him? Like that could have been a fan fiction for all we know, honestly. And what are you going to do, ask him? No, he's in hell. Before you try to dispute me, he's in hell. I know he is, for a fact. And if the hell doesn't exist, he should be there. Um, anyways, we have no proof that, like, th th the Crusades ever happened. How do we know? I mean, you could literally say that about anything in history. Like, how do we know it happened? And we don't. We really don't. I'm just seeing that. Yeah, you, you know it's going to trigger a whole bunch of people on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Like, Absolutely, and without which a doubt. Which it naturally did. In this case, it offended the K-pop stands. I feel like the K-pop stands are just Twitter police. Yeah. But sure, there can be a whole lot of issues with how history is passed on throughout our generations. Like, we would have most likely been way ahead of what we are right now if the Library of Alexandria didn't burn down. If it even burned down. Ooh, I see what you did there. So I feel like her questions, uh, they would have been better off on less sensitive history topics. <laughs> Because naturally when K-pop Twitter found this, they replied by saying, um, Forget I said her take was smart. This is what y'all encouraged. How do we know it happened? I don't know, man. How do we know slavery and genocide happened quick? Ah, sh**. Twitter.com can take anything, absolutely anything, and somehow turn it into either a social or political issue. I feel like this is why the less time you spend on Twitter.com, the happier you are as a person. I hope there's a study that comes out about that, right? That would be really interesting. There probably is. Or, well, it's not Twitter.com. It's probably just going to be social media in general. But anyway, it's clear to me that she was not trying to be offensive here. From what I see, she just wants to ask dumb questions so they could be answered by smarter people so she can get some social media engagement and maybe learn a thing or two. I kind of feel like, why is that even a problem? It's not a problem, but K-pop Twitter made it a problem. Is she asking dumb questions? Absolutely. But... Most of the comments, most people are explaining yeah, or answering exactly, her. Yeah. So it's not like people are looking at this and being like, she's so right. I'm just going to watch this video and then be like, all of that stuff she said is true. No, people are probably looking at the comments and then understanding if they didn't already understand. Exactly. It's either people who are like, you're dumb. I already understand how this works. Or people who are like, maybe I don't understand that. Look at the comments. Oh, now I do. Done. <laughs> and then she ended up actually quote tweeting the, the K-pop account. And she responded to this saying that this was about last Thursday day theory, it wasn't meant to invalidate people of color or their struggles or say that slavery and genocide didn't happen. I'm sorry to anyone I hurt. My intention was simply to talk about how if the world was created five seconds ago, we wouldn't have known. Well, I'm older than five seconds. <laughs> so that's how we would have known. True. Yes. But thankfully, there was someone who actually didn't get offended by this and answered it by saying this. The short answer is we try to find the most reliable evidence, like citing many sources from when an event occurred event, reliability of an author and matching archaeological records. You can't know for sure, but there is some notion of reliability. Might have been a typo in there, but that almost makes sense. But hey, what are your thoughts on all this? Is there such thing as dumb questions? And if there is, was any of her questions dumb questions? <laughs> that other was a dumb that, question. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I hope you guys are all hanging in there, staying safe. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like on it. If you're new here, I welcome you to my channel. It'd be awesome if you subscribe. If you want to follow me outside of YouTube, you can find me as a Tozy on Instagram or Twitter. Links will be down in the description down below. But on that note, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Got me like I'm barely sober. Slip right past like I barely know ya. Whip so fast like I whip Daytona. Got a bitch so bad that she grip my shoulder. Life flips so fast like a roller coaster. Shit not sweet like a cherry soda. Kid bone switch like a new persona. Fucked up, wouldn't do shit over. Move past looking at the upside. Late night and she call me.